As with numerous drivers being carjacked in various markets all over America, we're going to try our best not to suggest this is also becoming an epidemic among unfortunate rideshare drivers. What up, folks? Once again, it is your boy Tim with another very unfortunate ride-sharing video. The epidemic in question, because this has happened to about a half dozen drivers, at least from stories that have been covered here in about a month's time. That being having your passenger while you are actively involved in a trip, literally shot, if not killed, in the car while you're driving them around. It has happened yet again. Tonight, we're tracking the latest in the deadly shooting of a rideshare passenger. It happened last night in Little Italy. As CBS 2's Tara Molina learned, the 19-year-old victim's family works for an anti-violence nonprofit in the city. Police are still investigating the deadly shooting this evening. The victim's family still not ready to speak out, but they're telling me this was a senseless act of violence. A terrifying and tragic incident. That's what the Illinois Rideshare Drivers Guild is calling the deadly shooting Sunday night. Telling me many don't realize the risks drivers face each day. In this case, this ugly image says it all. Bullet holes covering the rear passenger window of the rideshare car outside Rush Hospital Sunday night. It's where a rideshare driver rushed their 19-year-old passenger, identified as Jaleel Goins, who was sitting in this car on West Taylor Street in Little Italy when just before nine, police say a man approached the car, pulled out a gun, and fired shots before running away. 19-year-old Goins was pronounced dead at the hospital. We've learned two of his relatives work with Project Hood, a nonprofit violence prevention organization in Chicago, calling this a senseless act of gun violence and a harsh reality we've pledged to combat. Goins' mom is the executive assistant to Project Hood leader, Pastor Corey Brooks, who told me the family doesn't want to speak out right now and didn't want him speaking on their behalf, but said they will honor the memory of their colleague's son by intensifying their efforts to prevent such tragedies in the future. We've confirmed the driver was driving for Lyft at the time of this shooting. More information from the Drivers Guild of Illinois and this story it's up on our website right now. Reporting outside CPD headquarters, I'm Tara Molina, CBS 2 News. Unfortunately, anytime Chicago is in the news, the news is generally not good. You hear the folks suggesting this is indeed a senseless act of violence. Yours truly certainly going to concur with that statement. Nevertheless, the passenger is in the vehicle and someone walked right up to the passenger window and open fire. Just look at the photo of the passenger's window. Notice the tight pattern of gunfire. So clearly this passenger received several rounds. There is no way anyone could maintain a pattern that tight without either some really good shooting skills or they're right up on the vehicle. Sounds like in this case, the, the assailant was literally standing right there putting all these rounds into this passenger. Oddly enough, they said he was pronounced deceased at the hospital. It's hard to believe he even made it there. I'm surprised the paramedics did not pronounce him DOA on the scene. But unfortunately, 19-year-old Jaleel Goins has passed away, a passenger in this Lyft vehicle. Very nice Lincoln vehicle, so upscale luxury car. Unfortunately for the driver, in addition to being traumatized, having a shit scared out of him with somebody firing into your car that many damn times, potential temporary hearing loss, he's also out of a vehicle because his vehicle is going to be marked as a crime scene. And while that process takes place, he clearly cannot earn a living. And of course, Lyft is going to tell him, we can't give you any trips until you get your shit fixed. Good luck on that. So... It really sucks all the way around. This pass, this driver also, you got to assume with that many rounds being fired, his window is not the only damage that was sustained in addition to all of the body matter and fluids that are in this vehicle. So this is really a graphic ending for this driver. I don't know if there is anyone that helps this driver out because... 
he obviously has insurance, so that might cover the window and maybe some door damage and things like that, but his car needs to be detailed. He's going to have a lot of body bodily fluid and matter all in the carpet and things like that. I don't know if insurance covers that. I don't know what the hell it costs to get something like that detailed, but I do believe when dealing with homicide scenes, law enforcement, for the most part, leaves that up to the owner of the home or in this case, the vehicle or whatever to clean up on their own. Once they process it for evidence and things like that, they leave it up to you to clean that. And I don't know. And I want to ask you, you veteran drivers, I don't know what the driver should do. Should, do you believe the victim, the, the, the card of the victim should be responsible for cleaning this up? Obviously, if a passenger gets in your vehicle and they vomit in the vehicle or whatever, they're responsible for that. You can actually have Lyft build a car. But what about if they're murdered? What if the fluid coming out of them is involuntary? And it's not because they drank too much, but they took too many rounds to the head. Do you believe the victim's credit card should pay for this? The actual assailant, the killer, is still out on the loose as you've seen in the story, so the police have not even caught the killer, and you're not going to get any type of, you're not going to recoup any damages from the person who did this. I mean, this is a 19-year-old victim. Chances are highly likely that the assailant is probably in the same age range, so it's not like you're going to be able to recoup anything from them. So at the at the end of the day, the driver of this Lincoln is responsible for all of the gun damage, all of the bodily fluids, all of this stuff is on the driver. So not only can he not earn an income, he has to pay for all the damages he sustained in the process. Who knows how long Chicago police will keep his vehicle while they process it. So really bad outcome for the driver might be out of a vehicle for a week a month we do not know and when they hand it back to him as we stated it's going to be a mess this is where yours truly and some of the folks in the comments we've all talked that uber and lyft should have insurance that the drivers do not have to contribute to that takes care of folks in these unusually awful circumstances because this driver is probably going to have to pay a deductible Lyft's deductible, if you use Lyft's insurance, what the hell is the deductible? Like $1,500 or something astronomically ridiculous, if I can recall. Let me know in the comments if I'm getting it wrong. I'd love to hear that, but I believe it's about $1,500. Somebody even once said $2,500. I don't know what the hell it is, but you're talking a newer model Lincoln Town car. If the opposite door, let's say those rounds went through the glass, maybe perhaps threw the passenger into a leather seat or into the leather paneling on the door or whatever the case may be. It's going to cost a good amount of money to replace that stuff because now rounds are putting holes in the metal. I mean, if it went through the door, then it may have exited out on the other side. If it went into leather seats, those are going to have holes in them. Lyft is not going to let you pick up passengers in a car where the seats have bullet holes in them or the passenger door has bullet holes in them. So he's got to get all of this shit fixed. This is where the ride sharing companies should have some form of insurance that kicks in in horribly awful cases like this. But nevertheless, they do not have that. So what do you guys think? Do you think that in a case like this, the driver should pursue some form of damages from the credit card of the deceased? Or should the driver just eat this and take the huge L financially that comes along with it? Awful story. Nevertheless, it is your boy, Tim. Subscribe to the channel. See you in the next video.